All right. Okay, well, um, we have started recording. All right. So I will say this is the beginning of our session, and I want to say hello and thank you everyone for joining us for the 2022 LD4 conference, Linking Global Knowledge. I'm Carrie May, and I'm hoping <laughs> that Joe will show up to help me um, in this session. I'll be the facilitator and possibly the chat moderator, but I might have a chat moderator a little bit. That might, it'll help things along in a, a, as the session continues with um, expanding the foundation for RDA as linked data, mapping Mark 21 bibliographic to LRM, RDA, RDF, being presented by Crystal Clement, Junhe Li, and Theo Gerontekos. And it will also be followed by a question and answer session. Now, before we get started, we are attempting to live stream right now, um, but uh, if nothing else, we are recording this session and it will be saved for later viewing on YouTube. I also wanna point out some things that are on the slide that you can currently see. We encourage you to take a look. The live stream just, it is live streamed. It just came up, all right. Uh, we encourage you to take a look at the conference website that you see there. Uh, there's more information about other sessions that you can get to there and also the conference code of conduct. We are using the hashtag LD42022 on Twitter, so please take advantage of that. Uh, please use the Slack invite link that you see to join Slack, as this will allow you to continue conversations that begin in these sessions in another uh, venue. We also offer a tech support channel in Slack for conference technology assistance. But if you uh, encounter uh, difficulties during this session in particular, please feel free to go ahead and raise your hand or drop a note into the Zoom channel. You can go to Slack as well, but we'd like to help you out as fast as we can so we can keep you moving forward in this. During this session, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat. I'll do my best to take uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, if, if I can't answer it on the way through, we'll answer them at the end in the Q&A. All right, so let me introduce you to your speakers. Our presenters are members of the linked data team in the cataloging and metadata services department at the University of Washington Libraries in Seattle. Crystal Clements, science cataloger, is the Mark 21 bibliographic to RDA LRM RDF project manager and contributes to the mapping. Chunhe Li, humanities and media cataloger, contributes to the mapping and Theo Jarantekos, head of the Metadata and Cataloging Initiatives Unit, provides administrative support to the project, can tip, excuse me, contributes to the mapping and leads the data transformation. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, and there we are. Okay. So um, as the title says, we're, we're aspiring to expand the foundation for RDA's linked data. And, our, and we're doing that through a project called Mapping Mark 21 Bibliographic to RDA LRM RDF. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lead off this talk. I'm gonna talk about well, what, what were they thinking when they launched this project at UW Libraries. So um, some of the foundations and even some of the foundations of the foundations of this project. Um, so, whoops. So uh, that would start by, telling you that we have a linked data team at University of Washington Libraries that Carrie already alluded to. Uh, we have seven people on the team and for the last few years, and it, we do some other things, but our main focus has been RDA uh, and the new RDA that's aligned with the li IFLA library reference model as it's as expressed in using resource description framework, the RDF. And our premise for this RDA focus has been pretty simple, maybe simplistic, and we've even been accused of being too binary, or whatever that means, uh, but we just, I think we have a premise that's worth testing. So what's the premise? It's that RDA data can be represented most accurately using the RDA ontology. I mean, there's a lot of other things we wanna to do too. Like for example, test RDA's fitness to support various research, research efforts when it's expressed as linked data. Uh, however, uh, the new RDA implementations are planned uh, one in MARC and then also in the bit frame environment. Our idea is how about RDA in RDA? Um, and when we say RDA and RDA, uh, you know, that's, that's RDA linked data. And we're, we're proposing to call that RDA slash LRM slash RDA. And, and so um, what we wanna do is we wanna um, um, move towards modern metadata, right? And, and, and Mark hasn't been appropriate for modern metadata. Probably everybody here knows that. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. It's inadequate for entity-based description or if you like linked data. Uh, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. And obviously we all know that there are too many 
text strings in mind. And there's many other things too. So with entity based description, then the thing that we want to go toward and why we do these projects is that we want to go towards a, a metadata world that is not record based. Uh, so we want to make series of assertions about entities. Uh, entities, of course, are things, uh, people, companies, places. And we aspire to uh, describe things using other things. And we aspire to assign unique identifiers to every thing and entity. Many of you know the, the link data principles too. Um, so it, it, in library data practice, we've created records. We usually do it uh, with a manifestation that's in a particular format, an, an audio recording, a book, a, a DVD. Uh, and then we create a record with an identifier for the record and maybe other identifiers in the record, but the requirement is that there's an identifier for the record. And in that record, we describe multiple entities in a single record. Uh, so we have that data. Why not just derive the entity-based descriptions from, from that? And of course, that's what our project, the new project is going to be doing. Uh, but there are lots of problems with it. We're running right up against them. And a couple of them include, um, you know, uh, Paul Frank talked about this a, a couple of days ago. Uh, what, what, when we have a subfield in the value, what entity exactly is being described? And then oftentimes the data uh, that's combined in a mark record is very difficult to, to recombine outside the mark environment. Uh, I'll insert a personal wish here. I, I really wish that we would have a little more urgency in moving away from mark records. Yeah. <laughs> so a superficial example of what I'm talking about is, let's say we have a JPEG. It was derived from a photocopy of all things and it's published in a digital library. Well, why a photocopy? Well, because uh, we lost a photographic print and we don't know who has the glass negative, but it's an important photo, photo, photograph. So we're gonna go ahead and scan it and then publish it. So if we create a record, um, uh, you know, when we say like, for example, one, just to name one property of creator, well, the creator of what? The creator of, of what thing? Um, uh, obviously, most of the times we mean the creator of the original photograph, but there's also a creator of the photocopy, creator of the photographic print, et cetera. So, so in modern metadata, of course, we have descriptions of all the things, and, and it, we're much more precise in, in what we're describing now. And of course, when, when we isolate the entities and describe them and share that data, theoretically, there will be a greater quantity of metadata. So what we're looking at, theoretically, is higher quality, higher quantity. Uh, okay, so the other environment that BibFrame is being implemented is BibFrame, right? And it seems tailor-made for entity-based description. It's often offered as a replacement for Mark, and, and, and it's, it's a pretty good standard. I mean, I mean, one of my favorite things about BibFrame is that uh, everything, all the entities are typed. So you always know uh, the class that it's an instance of that entity. And that's a, that's a great feature that they're very important in data sets. However, when you implement RDA in BibFrame, and this is one of the problems we had and why we wanted to go forward with what we do, is that a lot of RDA data gets lost in the BibFrame environment. And also there's havoc when the data models come together. Uh, for example, the absence of the expression entity alone wreaks havoc. And as probably everybody here knows, many, many RDA entity relationships are just not available in BibFrame in the data model. So that our talk is expanding the foundation of RDA for RDA is linked data. So obviously we think there's a foundation for RDA is linked data. So I should be clear on what that is. It's the art, what we call the art, RDA ontology, the element sets and the value of vocabularies as represented in the RDA registry and in the RDA toolkit. And we say we want to expand that foundation in our project. So obviously we want to broaden the use of that foundation, we want to explore the use of that foundation. And in this mark to RDA project, one of our main goals is to increase the quantity of data that makes use of that foundation. Um, for us, um, uh, the foundations are the foundations that I promised. Uh, we were, um, early adopters of RDA, a long time ago, uh, um, in the early 2000s, right? Um, and that was, of course, in the market environment. Uh, we analyzed and commented on BibFrame 1.0. We'd like to think we were instrumental in getting the improvements of BibFrame 2. Um, and um, we've been doing uh, joint BibFrame and RDA explorations since at least 2012, at least 10 years. Uh, somewhere around 2015, 2016, we started to feel like, well, why, why isn't RDA, LRM, RDF our data of record? And why don't we use that? rich data and output on formats as needed. So that would follow, uh, uh, we, would, we could therefore have our base data as the richest data and derivatives uh, would follow what double core metadata initiative calls the dumbed down principle. Our hypothesis was this is worth testing. And um, so RDA gets implemented, it's been implemented for years and it's gonna, the new RDA is gonna get implemented. Um, and meanwhile, the ontology gets overlooked. So we're wondering, well, who wants to not overlook this anymore? Who wants to go into a testing phase with RDA, LRM, RDF? One of the things we know, however, now is, is it's, just big, it's kind of big, it's a little large and we can't do it alone. Uh, we've completed a number of projects 
Um, and, and we got what we want, we did what we wanted to do, what we set out to do, but they were still partial by nature. And, and because they're not being adequately sustained, I would call them ephemeral. And we would like this project, Mark Our Day, to be more complete and sustained into the future. At the present time, we have some excellent, excellent um, collaborators. Uh, Gordon Dunsire is with the project. Uh, Sophia Zapunidu from National Library of Greece is with us. Laura Ackerman from Emory University. Sita Bagwandin from Royal Library of Netherlands. And uh, of course, Crystal Clements is here. She's our project manager. And then the remaining staff on the project is for, uh, from the Library. Um, and of course, we welcome additional participants, and Crystal's going to talk about that. Uh, so, what is this testing phase? Um, in this project, what we're looking at is we don't want to get more RDL, RDA, LRM, RDF data. Uh, we also, in addition to that, in the, in the bigger picture of our projects, we want more maps and alignments between RDA and other data models. And of course, much of that is already done in the RDA registry. If you go to the tools menu and then you look at the maps and alignments, you, you'll see a lot of maps and alignments. In fact, that's where we started this project. We took the um, our data mark uh, alignment and we reversed it and use that as a starting point. So um, in the UW library, I said, we, we've gone through several explorations in linked data um, uh, as the foundation for this project, I would say. Uh, Sinopia resource templates were created for RDA and for Vibframe. And then our cataloging staff used those templates to, to create uh, original RDA uh, uh, data. Uh, we also um, are, have a new project that's in progress right now uh, to create new Synopia templates to accommodate new RDA in Synopia and also to use a new syntax for creating resource templates in Synopia. Uh, we did the RDA to Bitframe mappings that uh, Paul Frank talked about, uh, mentioned those the other day. Our first mapping was in 2016. And our main thing is that we were trying to demonstrate that Bitframe wasn't ready for the BIPCO standard record. And then um, the RDA mapping we did in 2020 was much, much more comprehensive. We mapped all the RDA 1E properties to BitFrame. And then we wrote a transformation code that used that mapping to convert RDA to BitFrame. Uh, the current project, like I said, is, is our mark to RDA, LRM, RDF. It's cross-organizational, cross-organizational. I'm uh, hoping everyone participate. Um, we want it to be a comprehensive mapping. So every mark field, one by one, we want to go through them. Uh, has a potential for creating a large data set of RDA, LRM, RDF, even though it will be an imperfect data set um, because it won't be like creating original RDA, LRM, RDF. And uh, we're hoping to expand the tool set for analyzing RDA, LRM, RDF. I will also produce a conversion script based on the mapping. Right now, it's going to be an XSOP 3.0. We'll see how that, that uh, develops. And then, um, so once we're done, um, there's lots of things we can do. Um, for example, we hopefully can show our premise that RDA data can be represented most accurately using the RDA anthology. Uh, analyze that legacy data that was uh, expressed as RDA, LRM, RDF. Um, it's obviously going to need to be analyzed. Uh, show how easy RDA is to query when it's uh, expressed as linked data. See how uh, well RDA, LRM, RDF supports user tests. So we can even do some kind of um, metadata quality assessment. So obviously the data is going to need a home to do all that work in, but that's another project. We'll worry about that later. So let's talk about the actual project. Let's, Jung Hae is going to jump in here and I'll stop sharing. And this is what you came for. So um, the mapping from Mark 21 to RDA project um, was initiated in 2021 um, by the linked data team of the Cataloging and Metadata Services Department at the University of Washington Libraries. It was designed to create a robust mapping from the Mark 21 bibliographic format to RDA RDF with a corresponding data conversion tool. Authority data is beyond the scope of this mapping. Currently, project roster consists of 13 people from five institutions, 10 from the US and three from uh, Europe. So this project is a collaborative effort, which is cross-organizational and as well as international. Theo Jorantakos is the project manager, uh, supervisor, and Crystal Clements is a project manager. Participants of this project serve as mapping contributor conversion contributor, metadata consultant, or mapping consultant.
We are currently holding weekly 90-minute working me meetings via Zoom. We have been editing mappings in Google Sheets since May 2022. There are separate Google Sheets created for each mark field. We initially edited our mappings in a CSV file in GitHub by pulling and pushing changes. But since we have data format issues when working in a CSV file, we finally decided to move to Google Sheets and back up the latest updates in GitHub. Python scripts are used for transforming from Google Sheets to CSV files and loading updated releases to GitHub. So the GitHub repository is used for our project management and homepage with general information, project roster, resources, and our backup mapping files. It also includes meeting minutes, issues, and discussions, as well as a decisions index. Our working file was built based on the work of the RDA to mark 21 alignment task force with the RSC um, technical working group. This original work includes RDA element mapping and mark 21 bibliography encoding string and recording method. This is an example of our completed mapping in Google Sheet. We adapted it from the RSC Technical Working Group's RDA to mark mapping by adding in data and notes, such as mark field label and mark tag condition. Additional rows may need to be added by, um, to articulate multiple conditions. For our first meeting, uh, we mapped the mark 490 field to an RDA property as a group. Uh, as, you, as you can see here. So largely uh, two types of data or notes are included in the mapping table as follows. One type is existing data from MARC and RDA, such as MARC field, MARC field label, RDA registry URI, and RDA registry label. The other type is marked with asterisk, um, which are conditions or notes added by mapping contributors. These include um, mapping status, mark tag condition, justification for mapping, and transformation notes. So here is the simplified mark 21 to RDA RDF mapping project workflow. In the initial stage, we created a MARC21 to RDA mapping CSV file based on the work by the RDA to MARC21 alignment task force. Currently, we are focusing on the mapping process. Mapping contributors identify and select a MARC field to map. While mapping from a MARC to RDA, we discuss issues about how to deal with specific fields and subfields and make decisions through our weekly meetings and emails. Then we apply the decisions to our mapping. Once mapping for a mark field is done, another mapping contributor reviews the mapping. While in the process of mapping and reviewing mapping in Google Sheets, we back up the latest updates in the GitHub repository with semi-automated pushes. And, for, and in the final stage, we will convert MARC to RDA mapping to RDF using SSLT. Um, now, Crystal will um, um, tour uh, our uh, work environment. Hello. I will be your tour guide today. Um, so I'm going to jump right over to our GitHub repository, where all of this exciting work happens. Um, I want to start with our wiki. This has been sort of the project landing page for participants. Oh my goodness. Sorry about this. Okay, here we are. Um, this is our little homepage. It's got a little about section um, with information um, just about the project. And we have got a series of links 
um, for contributing to the project and communicating um, a list of resources that we found useful during our mapping work, and then a project roster with everybody's um, GitHub usernames. So in addition to this homepage, we've also been uh, keeping track of our meeting minutes and posting them publicly so that everybody can see what we're talking about, what we're working on. I have not added our full meeting minutes from yesterday, but um, they are up to date up until yesterday. Um, and then we're also doing an index of decisions that we've made that are based on you know, our own judgment versus specific direction and guidance from um, RDA documentation or MARC documentation. Um, so we have all of our um, sort of judgment-based decisions hanging out here, uh, organized and hyperlinked um, so that we can talk about them, refer back to them and uh, remain consistent in our mapping work, which is important to us. Um, in addition to this wiki, we are using GitHub for project management which has been kind of fun. Um, we've got a project board. So um, I went through and made an issue for every single mark field that needs to be mapped to RDA and put it in and um, you know created issues for other chunks of work that need to be done. Uh, and then we have these columns um, where each piece of work can be moved to its appropriate to its appropriate place. So you can see we've got 259 things to do, um, 31 in progress, 28 awaiting review, uh, one review in progress, and then uh, one that's ready for being transformed and 23 that are done. So um, we've gotten well underway, um, but there's a lot of work left to be completed. Uh, I can show you a little bit more about these issues. Um, we've establish some milestones for ourselves in this mapping to sort of organize our work. Our first milestone that we're trying to accomplish is to do, um, uh, is to map the entity or the uh, elements that are included in the PCC's RDA BSR, the Bibliographic Standard Record, um, because those seem to be the most important and most useful things to map first to us. Um, we'll move on to the PCC RDA CSR, so the concert standard record next. Um, and then we are also simultaneously building a minimum viable product for uh, data transformation, which is pretty exciting. Um, Theo is, is heading up that work. Um, and we've also added some various labels to make choosing, um, choosing issues easier. So hopefully this makes issues more navigable for project participants and people who want to take a look and see what we're doing. Um, these are all publicly available. We've also got discussions over here for things that need um, a lot of intellectual consideration before we move them into the mapping. These are also public and we welcome any input that anybody has. Um, there's various categories of, um, of issues that need to be that need to be worked out in a way that that functions for RDA and for Mark. All right, and then uh, we've also got our code as Chenge and Theo were talking about. Um, we've got a folder for instructions for the mapping, um, reference documents about data modeling that have been important, uh, the Mark of Qualities RIMF mappings. Uh, which we refer to sometimes. Um, and then these working documents have our transformation code um, for the automated process for moving things from Google Sheets into this folder. Um, so these are the CSVs that, that hold our mappings as they exist right now. And um, they're not complete, but you can peruse them at your leisure um, and uh, participate if you'd like. So in addition to our um, latest pushes, we have our Google Sheets working documents. Um, and these are just internal documents that we are using to, um, to complete the mapping work 
just makes it easier. It's nice. It's nicely formatted. I'll show you the one that I've been working on. This is for the 700. So using Google Docs, I'm able to um, I'm able to say, oh, we should delete this because it doesn't it doesn't work. It's wrong. Or I can say, you know, I've taken my first pass at this, and this is what I think. I can hide columns. Um, if they're not relevant, there's a lot of columns like character position, uh, which isn't relevant for the 700, but it is relevant for an 007. So um, I can hide columns that aren't relevant to me. Um, just makes it a lot easier to deal with, much more visually pleasing than dealing with a CSV, CSV file in a different format. So that is the quick tour of our project and our work. Um, if you are interested in joining, we can always use more help. Um, we could use more voices in the discussion section of our GitHub repository. We could use people bringing up issues if they see that we've done something wrong. Um, and if you want to join our weekly meetings and become like a more uh, like a mapping contributor, that would be excellent. Um, send me an email. My email's right here. Um, yeah, we welcome further collaboration from the community. And now we have time for questions and answers. Um, I'll go ahead. And uh, one did come through right here at the end uh, that I can go ahead and ask you that says, um, you have Dutch and Greek participants. Do you have entity labels in Dutch and Greek too? Our Dutch and Greek participants are participating in English. Bilingual people, at least bilingual. I don't know how many languages they speak. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, this came through really quickly. Hang on just a second. There was a very large question, um, but there was a response about the, um, about your response to the, I believe this is a, a same individual. So I believe that it's about the uh, Dutch and Greek says, yes, of course, but if you'll implement these in a library system, you'd need the labels in a local language. Um, I don't know if you had a response to that comment. Um, the, the RDA registry has um, RDA vocabularies available in many languages. Um, so they are included. Um, I can also respond to this uh, comment by Joshua Henry. Um, I'm actually, sure. I'm sorry, what? I was just looking at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the WEMI model and its incompatibility with VidFrame and, and the, the multitude of sort of workarounds that have been created um, by the Library of Congress or ShareVDE. I think that OCLC has developed yet another work model. Um, it was part of the reason why the LRM RDA RDF model was so, or the ontology was so attractive to us, um, was because, you know, from a catalogers perspective, when you're using RDA to catalog or the LRM or even um, the, meta the metadata guidance documentation for the official RDA, um, it's very confusing to try to apply that to a data model uh, that doesn't accommodate it. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I agree with you, Joshua, and it has been interesting to watch. I think that the super work has become the opus, so I don't think the super work is a thing anymore. Um, but the, the super work and the hubs, uh, or the opus and the hubs, I think the opus is attempting to be um, an equivalent to the LRM 
work and then treating works in bib frame and in SVDE bib frame as um, expressions. Um, but then there's different sort of takes on that because at the Library of Congress, I guess that they're using um, they're using the hub and it can refer to works or expressions. So I don't fully understand how it's different from a bib frame work other than it it can um, it can establish relationships between works, which RDA works can do already. So I, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of conversation to be had about that. Um, and then there was another uh, question from Lee Yang, do you adopt any automatic mapping method? And yes, uh, well, sort of. We took the mapping that went from RDA to MARC from the RDA registry, and we used Python to sort of switch it around and, um, and go in the other direction. And then we populated our initial mappings based on that. So that's, that's as far as our automated mapping has gone. Yeah, well, it'd, be, it'd be fun to see, um, uh, you know, because we're using human, human labor power to, to, to analyze everything field by field. And it'd be interesting to see how an automated process would do, like the kinds of things they've been talking about in the discipline of ontology matching for the last 15 years. It'd be nice to see, you know, I don't think we'll have time to go through and do that, but if somebody wants to go through and make a comparison between the results of human labor and machine labor, it'd be pretty, pretty fantastic. So Carrie had to jump off. Um, uh, so I'm filling in uh, by monitoring the Q&A. There's a question here from Zoe Dobbs that says, why do you think a lot of the library world seems to be moving towards RDA in BibFrame rather than an approach like UWs? Mm. Uh, that that's that's hard to answer, isn't it? I mean, why 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 why? I mean, we all have different answers. Why don't we give it a give it? I'll give it a try. I mean, for me, I would I would just say I try to keep it simple and not get too complicated. And the answer is, I think it's because Library Congress led the way, and they led the way uh, by having Zafira come and produce BibFrame one point oh. They they've been refining BibFrame ever since, and you know, I mean. In some respect, we're all running to the edge of the cliff, you know, somehow. I mean, we're running towards the edge of a cliff too. We're hoping that what's on the other side is good, but we're, we've decided to diverge from the big frame crowd and to try and uh, do a testing thing in RDA, LRM, RDS. Um, what, what, what do you, I mean, is that, does that correspond with the, is it just because it's because LC? I mean, does that correspond with what you think? Um, I think it's because of LC and also there are, there are vendors who are using it. Um, you know, we we're an ex Libris library. And so, um, you know, Clarivate and ex Libris products, um, ProQuest, I think maybe, um, all are using bib frame in addition to Mark. Um, the bib frame quality is really, um, it needs work. Um, from Ex Libris at least, and and from the last time that we did uh, data analysis from the Share VDE's version of BibFrame, which was back during LD4P2, um, that BibFrame was very different from um, LC's version of BibFrame, and and the work clustering needed a lot of work as well. So I, I but I think that those large vendors, that large libraries, are are sort of subscribing to um, have led the way and you know people tend to follow that because we work in a shared cataloging environment. Um, I'm seeing another question here. Um, oh, did anybody else have anything to add to that last question or should I read off the next one? Next one. Okay, um, question from Benjamin. Um, working through the MARC fields up to this point, has the group had the opportunity to begin discussing best practices for modeling in a, in modeling a nomen in RDA slash RDF? For example, when to create and model a distinct nomen resource versus providing textual values for attribute elements or what a minimal description of a nomen might look like. 
I think you know the answer to this, Benjamin. Um, <laughs> Gordon Dunsire actually uh, provided us with um, sort of a good rule to look at. Um, and it had to do with, you know, things that are RDA entities, such as works, expressions, manifestations, items, agents, time spans, those sorts of things. Um, things that get their own entity can be described by nomens, um, but things that aren't an entity shouldn't have nomens. So like a, a, a note isn't an entity. It, 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 I think it is in BibFrame, but in um, RDA, a note isn't an entity, so it wouldn't get a note and it just has a label. Um, and it can have multiple labels in different languages, but, um, but it doesn't have a nomen. So I think that a nomen is um, an entity where there's an appellation for another RDA entity. And I think Gordon Dunsire might be here. And if I'm wrong, please correct me. <laughs> Yeah, once we describe when, it's really a question of when to, to, to create a nomen. Uh, uh, you know, it's like, do we create a nomen, do we create an IRI for this as a nomen or not? And once that, once we do that, it's already modeled, right? It's already, it's a, it's a thing that's already modeled. So we just follow the model that's in RDA. And there's lots of properties that we can use to describe the nomen. Oh, here's uh, Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, Gordon is chiming in to say the motivation is reuse and recycling of metadata sharing. Uh, there's another question here um, from uh, Nick Versteeg. Um, apologies if I have mangled your name. Um, are these ontologies a bet that catalogers can invest more time describing individual resources? It seems like the motivation is to capture even more of the world than we already do. Is that a trade-off the profession can make? You know, um, I really, these ontologies are not necessarily fully prescriptive. So you don't need to use every single element in the RDA registry. We would create application profiles um, to accommodate the descriptions that we are already choosing to do. So um, RDA isn't saying um, that you need to that you need to use all of it. So I really think that um, like a cataloger looking at an application, maybe an application profile in Synopia um, for RDA versus BibFrame, they're probably going to see mostly the same things, um, except that the labels where it prompts you what to write in, the, what to, how to fill in the blank, um, behind the labels for the RDA profile, there's an RDA property that exactly matches the thing that the cataloger is bothering to put in. And in bib frame, many of those are going to something less specific. Um, and in my mind, that wastes a lot of cataloger time um, because why, why are we recording that if it's not going to be, if it's not going to be computer readable? So, um, yeah, I, I don't think that we are um, creating any more description than we would have been in Mark, even um, if we're cataloging based on RDA. Yeah, it's inconceivable to think of using RDA without application profiles. I mean, that's exactly what we're doing too. Chris already talked about it when we create uh, resource templates in Synopia, which can be ported into other platforms. It doesn't have to be used in, in Synopia. Uh, yeah, it's inconceivable. Uh, so I, we don't, yeah, like Kirsten said, we don't have to use the whole ecology. I'm not seeing any more questions. Um... We have three minutes left. Uh, oh, wait, a question, a long one just appeared. Uh, I would qualify what was said, this is Laura Ackerman. I would qualify what was said about Ex Libris supporting BibFrame. They're aware there are customers, uh, there are customers interested in other models. They incorporated the LC mark to BibFrame transformation tools into Alma. Um, I, oh, it's more of a comment than a question. I am going to not read the whole thing out loud at you, but thank you, Laura. Yeah, there's also that um, 
you know, Ex Libris is a Clarivate subsidiary, I, from what I understand, and um, OCLC has not been pleased <laughs> with the, um, with that practice. So I'm a little bit hesitant to say that, um, I'm, I'm hesitant to put faith in the fa in the in the possibility of ex libris providing a um, cataloging editing interface um, for linked data it, it it seems up in the air to me right now like it might not end up happening maybe I'm misunderstanding the nature of the situation but Uh, Zoe is asking, can you repost to everyone? I'm not sure what that's referring to. Um, oh, Laura's comment is to hosts and panelists. Oh, I I'm sorry. I didn't, I should have perhaps, I will paste, I will cut and paste it. Um, uh, hopefully Laura, I assume that Laura will not mind as she did not object to me reading it out loud. Um, I feel like this happens in every other session. There you go. Okay, so um, we have, oh, we are at one o'clock. Um, any closing remarks before I stop the live stream? All right. Um, thank you all for this, and thanks to everybody for coming. Um, uh, I don't. Uh, I our our moderator had to to hop off, so I'm not sure what the appropriate closing is. Um, but this uh, was wonderful, and I hope it was um, that everyone enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, thanks so much, and uh, thanks for letting me hop in.